Come on, Harley. Please, step up your game. All right. What's going on, YouTube? 6'5 Rider here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're at Palm Beach Harley Davidson and we're testing out a 2024 Harley Davidson Roguelide. As you may know, there's no longer a Roguelide special, no longer a Roguelide standard. There's still a limited, but it still looks like, you know, like the old generation Roguelides. Oh, this thing's on rain mode, come on. Give me a road mode at least. Now they only have the Roguelide and the Roguelide CBOST. But they do give you the option when buying a new bike to customize it and build it out from the factory to have that special trim, to have that ST trim, or um, you know, customize it kind of however you want. So instead of you know going to the Harley Davidson dealership and you're like, oh, I want a Roguelide special. No, you can actually order it now. Which is pretty cool. So a few moments ago I was actually on the Roglad ST and you can watch that video by clicking over here and I was about to like leave but then I saw this one I was like hey let me ride the regular Roglad so I can uh, try to tell the what the difference is between the two and I can tell you compared to the Roglad ST this one is more of a you know kind of sitting back and chilling type of ride these are the new uh, stock handlebars on it, but as you can see, like they, whoever installed it did not do a good job because that thing is moving. So I wanted to uh, kind of ride it right after the ST and kind of see what the difference is between the two. Um, and I can tell you right off the back, the 121 compared to the 117, is in a whole other level but that 121 is no joke <laughs> don't get me wrong the one uh this one the 117 is not bad either especially once you open it up and like you know put a couple more things into it but uh stock i don't know it feels like it's a little constricted we're on highway mode we'll try to change it up to uh, sport mode here in a little bit to see what's up Here's your menu, you got your radio, you got all your controls, kind of like a normal, like the older Harley Davidson Roguelide, except for the volume buttons and the audio controls are on the right this time around, versus before it was down here, which uh, can take a minute or two to get used to. But I can tell you this new handlebar is so much better than the old wheelbarrow type of handlebars like probably with these if you're a person that doesn't care for the performance bagger look all you would probably need to do with this one is just roll it forward a little bit and uh and you'd be absolutely fine with it so this bike it's got the 117 motor that's their new standard the engine size Overall, I mean, it's a it's a good looking bike. It uh, feels very basic. This one, I don't know if you saw in the in the video, which I'll pull up here. They uh, customized it with the touring pack. They customized it with uh, a heel toe shifter and a few other components. It still comes standard with this big ass screen. Got the infotainment system. You got the upgraded radio, which let's see if we can test out here. MSC's private island marine resort. Yeah, that's really, really loud compared to my bike. <laughs> you know what I mean? Feels great. Still got this tiny little windshield. I mean, I don't have much to complain about it except for, again, like all Harleys, it is not, it is not made for a bigger rider. It's made for somebody who's short, Maybe stocky, but definitely not tall. Come on, man, take these turns harder. I need them to push it a little bit, come on. Um, I 
again, like the premise of this video is not to go over specs, not to go over what's happening with this bike. It's all about basically my impression as a Harley Davidson Road Glide owner and um, how it differs between the older generation Road Glide. I can tell you for sure it differs a lot. This one's definitely more smoother, more responsive because you got that 117. Not as responsive as the ST. I will keep saying that over and over again. It's like a night and day difference uh, between this and the Rogue Glide CBO ST. That one is just on a whole other level. That one is as if you took a older generation 117 or older generation Rogue Glide ST and put a cam on it and fucking made it and dyno tuned the shit out of it. So it kind of feels like an older 117 on steroids. Right from the factory, you know? This one feels, I don't know, it feels, it feels good. I don't have complaints about it. It feels, feels like a good bike. feels good it feels smooth like if I get a better seat that pushes me further back and get some you know highway bars I can see myself taking this trip uh, this bike on a very long you know a long trip without even having to do many modifications to it it's just like you know just comfy and easy going you know I don't like the fact that this is not gloss on um, my Rogue Glide special this whole setup right here is gloss. I don't know if you can get that as an option. Um, I'll put it up here if you can. But it makes it look super cheap, I'm sorry to say. I like the new, you know, the new pockets. You throw stuff in there rather than just place them um, like that. Yeah, I mean, it's simple, dude. There's no, no complaints about it. I'd, I'd ride it around. But it doesn't give me that, you know, sort of like performance bagger type of feel. It's good though, it's not bad. I'm not 100% impressed, but it's not bad. All right, let's change it to sport mode. See how that feels. I do like the infotainment system over here. It looks really cool. But again, like, like this, dude. This is like so cheap. Come on, Harley. Like, give me, give me a mechanical thing to raise the windshield and put it down. Give me inverted forks on the standard Rogue Glide. Don't just put it on your CVO model that costs forty-two thousand dollars. Put it on this bike. Put it on the standard bike. Most bikes nowadays. My ten thousand dollar Indian FTR has inverter forks and as Brembo brakes. Come on, Harley, please step up your game. <laughs> Trying to get a rev bomb going. It's good, it's good. I'm, I'm not wholly impressed and I'm not wholly disappointed. But if you tell me like, hey, would you go trade in your, uh, your current bike with its current setup for a brand new Rogue Glide 2024 I would say probably not I'd just rather keep it now if you tell me for a CVO ST I'd be like hell yeah but for just a regular Rogue Glide I'd say probably not bro see where it cuts off I feel like th those are just the uh, Harley restrictions you know with a good dyno tune you can really open this thing up to go up to like 6,000 6,200 rpm all right let's try the cruise control 
cruise control feels great, the bars feel pretty stable, and me, I'm just chilling right now. I like it, it's not bad. Maybe in a few years, you know, once uh, somebody has a Roglide ST and they want to sell it for cheaper, I'll go and trade on my bike and buy it. But if it's not a CVO ST, I don't want it. Sorry to say. I'd rather keep my bike. Before I forget, I want to give a big shout out to the folks over at Palm Beach Harley Davidson for uh, putting this demo day together. Here we're at third gear, we're at 3000 RPM. Yeah, it's got, it's got some go. I mean, it is a 117, so it, it's got some power. It's got good brakes, I can tell you that for sure. Uh, but yeah, shout out to Palm Beach Harley Davidson if you guys are interested in uh, purchasing any of these new models and you live in the Palm Beach County, head up Palm Beach Harley Davidson, head up the main man Stogie over there, he'll hook you up. <laughs> to be honest, other than like its smoothness, I don't have much to like get my heart pumping about this bike. Other than the fact that it's super smooth, I can tell you that for sure. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Anybody that's ridden this bike, let me know in the comments what you think. The CVOSD made my heart pump like crazy and gave me all kinds of feels. This bike, not really, no. Again, from the factory. You can still take this bike, you can put a cam in it, you can dyno tune it, make it look like a beast. You can get some SBC risers on this thing, SBC bars, you can get a longer seat, you can make it look amazing and make it feel amazing and then go from there. But straight from the factory, it's uh, kind of a no for me, bro. Unfortunately. But again, it's their first year in, uh, in releasing this model. We'll wait to see what happens over the next year or two. And uh, go from there. I mean, I have no major complaints. That's my overall thoughts is no major complaints. Anyway, uh, I'm actually going to cut it short because I kind of said all I have to say about this bike. I kind of just want to get back to the dealership and jump on my bike if that's any indication to anything at all. If you stayed this long, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed uh, my first ride thoughts and review of this bike. And um, if you found it helpful or insightful whatsoever, do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We have a really big goal this year of hitting 1,000 subscribers before the end of the year. We're at 694 right now. And uh, hoping to, you know, hit a thousand by the end of 24 so we're so close you guys uh let's keep the steam going and uh let's let's hit that subscriber mark all right y'all i enjoyed having you here and i'll see y'all on the next one later peace